Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and call this regularly scheduled March 25th commission meeting to order. Uh, I have no changes or additions to the agenda as it was published. So with that, I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Ooh, I have one from Commissioner Coleman down there. I'm sorry. There are changes. There are changes. They're in the consent agenda, right? No. That would be biased. But all the changes are in the consent agenda. And that was changed as we go. Move item 13. Move item 13. Two. Oh, it's on my agenda as 1, 2, 13. So we're moving item uh, 13 to item 3 under presentations. There we go. I fibbed. We have one change to the agenda as it was published. All right. <clears throat> With that, do I have a motion to approve? It might be on your agenda if you just print it off. But it's just listed as number 13. Okay, so without one change, I have a motion from Commissioner Coleman to approve the agenda. Second from Commissioner Martin. Any comments or questions on the motion on the floor from the dice? Public comments or questions on the motion on the floor just to approve the agenda as it was published. With that one change, hearing none, all those in favor, send it by, by saying aye. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. I'd like to invite um, Pastor Ian Kemp from Newberry United, United Methodist Church tonight to give tonight's invocation. If you would, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. It will follow directly after Pastor Ian. Thank you, sir. Join me. God of love, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this community, for the leaders, and all individuals and community members who are here today. We also come to you on a heavy day. In the wake of a tra tragic death of a student in our community, we ask for your healing and your comfort to be found here. We pray for family, friends, high schoolers, teachers, administration that are feeling this loss. And may they know that they are not alone. But as the work of this committee continues tonight, be a guiding force of wisdom, patience, and unity. And as Newbury grows and changes in the present and looking to the future, we pray that the work here builds hope, excitement, and possibility. Amen. Amen. Mr. Thank you, Pastor Ian, for those comforting words and a moment of difficulty. Uh, and Janine, if you would maybe give us one degree cooler. We got more people in here than we uh, anticipated. A lot of them are in jackets, so one degree down would be great. Uh, okay, so that's going to take us to presentations. And our first presentation tonight is quite the special presentation. Uh, we want to recognize James Monty Farnsworth for his 20 years of service. So we have a couple of things here that we want to do to recognize two decades. Two, I never knew his name was James. It, it's just Monty, right? We're learning all kinds of things here tonight. So I'm going to read this proclamation in, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what uh, some things Monty recently said in a speech that we want to make sure we honor his past and his family's history. But let's start with the proclamation. <clears throat> well, as Commissioner James Monty Farnsworth has devoted 20 years of exemplary service to the city of Newberry, demonstrating an unwavering commitment to our community and its citizens. And whereas throughout his tenure, Commissioner Farnsworth has exhibited outstanding leadership, integrity, and dedication, significantly contributing to the improvement, enhancement, development, and preservation of our civic resources. And whereas Commissioner Farnsworth has consistently prioritized the welfare of our citizens, ensuring that every decision and action taken under his guidance was done with the utmost consideration for the community's best interest, safeguarding the prosperity and well-being of our people for generations to come. And in Monty's case, that's true. 20 years, that's a generation, generations to come. Whereas Commissioner Farnsworth, efforts have fostered a spirit of collaboration and excellence, encouraging others to contribute positively to our community. 
And whereas it is appropriate to recognize and commend such outstanding service and to express our gratitude for Commissioner Farnsworth's dedication and lasting contributions. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Mayor Jordan Waddle, on behalf of the Newberry City Commission, do hereby urge all citizens to recognize and celebrate the achievements and contributions of Commissioner Farnsworth to our community. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Newberry to be affixed this 25th day of March 2024. Now, don't get up for pictures yet. <laughs> We're going to give you this proclamation. You're going to have to, going to, have to sit there uh, awkwardly while we brag on you a little bit. Now, uh, if you were at the um, groundbreaking ceremony for Publix, Commissioner Monty gave um, a little history of the city of Newberry. His family ran a grocery store, and he told a story about how you would come in, and there was a big round of cheese. And you would come in and you'd cut out your section of cheese for your family for that week, right? And you'd kind of weigh it out and pay for it if you could in time. So tonight we have brought uh, cheese rounds. And uh, Commissioner Amani, we would like you to cut a slice for everybody. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. But these cheese rounds are here in recognition, not just of Commissioner Farnsworth, but of uh, Monty's long uh, history of making sure that the residents in this town uh, had their groceries, probably sometimes even when they didn't have the money to pay for it, on um, the barter system and the handshake system and the trust system. So serving this community is in Monty's genes. It's part of his DNA. He's been here for a long time and his wisdom and guidance is, uh, is much appreciated. So I'm gonna give you this proclamation, but then I want you to at least cut one of those cheese rounds. But before we do, the, do, do that, I do want to also present you for 20 years of service with the key to the city. So if you will, please come down here. We're after 20 years, we're gonna give you a permanent city. I can get the rest of the commission. Come on down here. Let's take a, a picture together, and then we'll kind of take a, a moment for your family to come up here. And then we're going to need about a good 10, 15, 20 minutes speech from you after that, okay? <laughs> you need us to move back here? Or is that? Let's go back. Yeah, go back there where, where uh, Ricky is. Watch out. Don't let that fall out there. All right. That's going to put mine right there in the middle. That's perfect. How's that look? Can I move this? Uh-huh. Ready? One, two, three. One. All right, family, come on up here and celebrate. How, how old are you? So almost your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to be up here for 20 years? Get it with you? <laughs> <laughs> Every day feels like 20 years. <laughs> Should I face this way? I think I should yeah, face this round. <laughs> All right. Give a politician an open mic and. There we go. Uh, ben, uh, that mic wasn't here 20 years ago. That's true. 
I started uh, in 1986. It was me, uh, Lois Wart, and Andy Crowless had gotten elected that year. But over the years, I've seen a lot of different things happen and a lot of good things, some not so good. But uh, people think that, you know, commissioners makes all these decisions and and uh, comes up with all these great ideas and everything, but we really don't. It's, we uh, depend on the the great staff that we have here at the city of Newberry. Um, they do all the leg work. They, they get all the material ready for us to look at and and uh, go over. Uh, I think we had like 433 pages of material just for this meeting alone. So it's quite a bit. They, and uh, without without them, i would be nothing. And and people ask me a question I don't have an answer to, but I I know which number to call to to get the answer. So that's that's basically. Uh, what we do, we depend on, on the uh, on the uh, uh, employees of the city to, for uh, for all this, and of course my fellow commissioners from this go around and in the past, and they've all been great. We don't always agree on everything, but you know they did what they were supposed to do, and they they uh, felt they were doing the right thing, and and none of them had done anything uh, maliciously towards the city of Newberry, which is great. Uh, I think my brothers and, of course, my uh, son, uh, my mother and my father. My, my dad was a city commissioner here for a long time, as long also as the mayor for a while. And uh, mentally and of course, she had a lot of influence on uh, all, the, all the things I've done. And uh, she told me, a long time ago, I went to. I was running one day, and I went to go up to get her vote. She says, "Ain't no need you ever coming by here." He says, "Mon Fonsworth, as long as you're running for office, I'll be voting for you." So, uh, I always appreciated her and her husband, uh, Shine Warfleet. Shine's up there too, isn't he? Yeah. So, um, but that's. Uh, I want to thank everybody, and I guess most of all, I need to thank the. Uh, citizens of Newberry for continuing to, to put me back in office and when they give you that bit of confidence that you're doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing and they, they re-elect you over and over again it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling and uh, I'll continue to serve as long as I can or as long as I feel like I'm capable of, of doing the right thing but uh, thanks everybody and I really appreciate everything you've done don't go. Don't go anywhere. Because the city of Newberry, we wanted to recognize you, but the Florida League of Cities also wanted to recognize you. So, Mr. Chris Holly, will you please come down? Because uh, 20 years is impressive in Newberry, and it's impressive across the state. You aren't lying. And I'll tell you, uh, with your comments and Monty's comments, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, let me just let me just say so. This award um, is named after Mayor John Land, who served the city of Apop Apopka for 60 years. Um, th this award, um, you know, we do this for those that, that reach this milestone and those at five and ten year increments. And I can tell you, it's less than one percent of our overall membership that receives these annually. So this is an incredible honor. Um, this is the resolution, and I'll read just one bit of it, and it's funny because your comments hit right at it, and then we've got a lapel pin for you, but for those in the audience, the resolution reads, whereas several terms in office are a high compliment voters give to an official, and with these years of experience comes a strengthening of wisdom, discernment, and strong leadership skills that, br that bring tremendous value to the municipal governments of Florida. And that's something in this resolution that I try to read every single time because it's so important. It's right on point with the comments that you were making. So with that money, it's signed by our current president, Greg Ross, with the Florida League of Cities, and Jeannie Gardner, our executive director. So congratulations. One, two, three. Perfect. 
Thank you, sir. I really appreciate this. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Holly. We appreciate you making the trip up here to recognize our commissioner. Let me get a bigger house, put all these things on the wall. Yeah. Well, now we know your goal, Monty, is 61 years. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 41 years to go. No problem. No problem. Hey, Monty. Uh, Monty, when you jump out of the closet, I'm Superman! <laughs> you remember that, Uh, now he is. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Coleman. All right, here we go. When I first ran, uh, I didn't really, I mean, I knew Monty, but I didn't know Monty in his uh, witty ways. And uh, really new to Facebook, to be honest with you, when, at that time. And uh, I, was, I, I was scrolling through the page, and all of a sudden there's this guy, uh, I believe, climbing a uh, palm tree. Does anybody remember that? I do. I know the picture you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, he's climbing this pine tree, and he gets, I think he gets a coconut. And he scrolls back down the pine tree. And runs over to over to the camera and says, "Vote for Monty." <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And I mean, this is somewhere in uh, the Caribbean. He actually got somebody in the Caribbean to do that. <laughs> yeah, palm tree. Yeah, coconut yeah. tree. Palm tree. Palm tree. Oh, okay. Yeah. How much does that cost you to get somebody in the Caribbean to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's all. Uh, uh, anybody else, uh, you know, want to take a moment? Anybody got a Monty story they want to share? We don't want to embarrass you too long. Mr. Mayor, I'll just say it's been a pleasure serving with him. I've known him a long time, his family a long time. When we grew up as kids, this, you know, this family had stores here, everything. So uh, it's just been a pleasure serving with him and known his family for since I was a little guy. So. Uh, I always use Monty as an example of dry humor because if you don't know him, you know, you don't catch it, you know. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Commissioner Farnsworth, for 20 years of service. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Holly, for coming down. And uh, we have another exciting presentation. Ms. Uh, Judith Jessen, you want to come down and introduce yourself? She's a supervisor for elections for candidates. Uh, she's going to tell us a little about her and her campaign. And yes. Welcome. We appreciate you coming. Well, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to speak to you folks. Um, I am running for supervisor of elections. And when I have been out gathering petitions, the one question that really bothers me is people ask, do I think the election was stolen? And it just shakes me to my core that people would even think about asking such a question in our society because that shouldn't be an issue. It's the bedrock of how we all end up with our leaders. And, you know, after seeing somebody who has devoted so much time to civic duty and, and um, service, here I am starting potentially a career in that um, service, and it's awe-inspiring. When we look at the 2020 election, you know, this is kind of a somber um, topic after what we just heard, but there were over 80 lawsuits that were brought um, questioning that election. And most of those were never even heard or the evidence was never presented just because lack of standing or other um, technical problems. But several states did change their election laws as a result, and Florida was one of them. Um, and I knew I couldn't do anything about Washington, D.C., and I couldn't do much about Tallahassee other than just, you know, writing or texting somebody. But I thought, well, what can I do here in our county? And um, I started out alone. I started out um, just looking at voter rolls and looking at um, the 
voter rolls for people over the age of 100 and seeing whether maybe there were some of them that I had evidence weren't alive anymore. And I did find some people and filed a Florida Election Commission complaint. Two and a half years later, it was judged legally insufficient. Um, but it was my start in election integrity. Um, as I went on, I found other people. <laughs> um, and excuse me, that is my banner, cleaning up elections, establishing trust and transparency. Um, I found other people who also were concerned about the kind of things that I was. And we felt that a new direction might be indicated. My goals as supervisor of elections, should I be um, elected, would be to make sure that the statutes are being enforced, that any machines used are accurate, that robust audits are done, including hand counts, not just relying on machines, to collaborate with citizen researchers like myself to remove ineligible voters, not just inactivate them, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, to provide equal opportunities for all kinds of people to work in that office, to ensure that the Sunshine Laws actually provide the public records that are intended to be provided, um, to provide proactively maintain the voter rolls, not just do it according to, you know, when the report has to be done, but to actively keep working on them, to give voters a choice. No Republican has even challenged for this position since 2004, and I went back as far as 1992, and there's only one political party that has been in this um, role all this time. Um, so I thought it was time to step up, and I felt called to do so. Um, another thing I would like to do is um, make sure that productivity standards are observed in that office, because I just attended um, a canvassing board meeting where there were 10 people from the S uh, SOE, Supervisor of Elections Office, and over a two hour period, those 10 people um, adjudicated 31 ballots. And I thought, wow, I come from the private sector where productivity and acuity and, and you know, those things are very key. And um, that just didn't seem like maximum productivity to me. Um, qualifications supporting my candidacy is that mostly it's been volunteer. Um, I have been a poll watcher, poll worker. I have observed signature comparison sessions, and I even um, did write an opinion piece for the Chronicle on that. Um, I've been to canvassing boards, logic and accuracy testing, and um, through the Electoral Republican Executive Committee, of which I'm the secretary, I started um, a group called Impact Alachua, which is um, looking at ways we can impact uh, election integrity here in our county. In the recent High Springs election where I reside, I was very active in helping to get those folks elected. Um, I spent a lot of time and energy there, and we were successful. Some of the organizations that I've been involved with is the Election Integrity Network, Florida Fair Elections Coalition. We have a weekly Zoom call where we talk about things going on in the state, and we have a number of people that are very active in that. People's Audit has developed a wonderful um, database that can be used to identify people who um, might questionably be on our voter rolls that don't belong there. And of course, Defend Florida, where I started out with a walk list going not knocking on doors to a one-bedroom apartment where eight to ten people were registered and the person says, no, none of them live here. So that was how I started, was just seeing what was on the voter rolls. Um, and then looking around at the, um, the press, different articles, you know, we talked about felons being registered in, while they were in jail and then um, they voted and were prosecuted. We saw misprinted ballots in 2022 in precincts 27 and 51 where candidates were left off. Um, ballots um, for Republicans where there weren't even any ballots and um, candidates not living in the district for which they were elected and then having to be replaced. So there were things that we saw locally that gave us pause. 
My professional background is that I have been a registered nurse all my adult life. Um, I have a master's degree, got halfway through my doctorate. Um, I have managed busy labor and delivery units with moms and babies and um, been responsible for a staff of 100 professionals. So I do have um, leadership and management experience, and I always have excellent performance evaluations, um, and I'm currently still working. Different, um, and I don't work on election integrity alone. I also um, work with those organizations that I talked about, but a great source of support has been the Alachua exec uh, Republican Executive Committee, because we are a subcommittee there. Um, so now I would just like to go over some of the issues that I was hoping would give me confidence in our election processes. So um, we kind of delved into um, voter ID and um, on a national basis our Attorney General Merrick Garland said you don't need um, identification to vote. Um, and, you know, that's kind of problematic because you need an ID to do almost everything in life. You know, to buy a gun, to open a um, credit card, anything. So to not need one to vote just seems counterintuitive. And for mail-in voting, however, you don't need to show any ID. You just need to have a signature. And I have seen signatures. I've gone and watched hundreds of them on a screen in the SOE office, what was on the ballot, what's on the registration. And these have been already cleared. And many of them are kind of you know, not exactly matching. When we also look at um, a partisan challenge to election integrity, what springs to mind is the Center for Tech and Civic Life funding that the SOE office received, $750,000 of partisan money um, that was supposed to be spent for COVID relief. But I did a public records request, so PRR, and that's my tool for digging. And I found out what all those funds were spent on, and it was marketing, operations, hardware, software, drop boxes, nothing on like gloves or, um, you know, Purell or anything like that. And then um, the current incumbent was serving on the advisory board for that group while receiving that money and did not perceive that as a conflict of interest. Um, that partisan funding is now illegal in Florida because of the laws passed in 2022. But it just seemed not reassuring. Another thing that didn't seem very reassuring is our voting machines. Um, recently, um, an expert, Professor Halderman, in a Georgia court went into a Dominion machine with a big pen that he borrowed from somebody and changed the vote totals. And then he went in through the printer port with a little bully stick and reprogrammed it. And, you know, this, this was on the record, um, and we use Dominion voting machines here in Alachua County. Um, they keep insisting that they're accurate and that we can trust them. Don't worry. They show us logic and accuracy tests where, you know, they feed 30 little ballots in there and everything is like totaled up fine. And um, I went to the LNA testing and there were 10 machines out of 164 used. And it's like, okay, I guess I believe that they're accurate because you're telling me. But, um, Pay attention to the writ of certiori, which I'm probably mangling, that was filed recently with the Supreme Court. Um, the evidence is 210 pages, very interesting. It's been docketed by the Supreme Court, and it um, challenges the, authentic, you know, the authentic work of the machines. So we may, in the future, see some kind of evidence about the machines maybe being questionable. 
so I wasn't reassured by the machines necessarily. Cast vote records um, were requested of every county in this country. And uh, um, what they show is the cumulative effect of people casting votes. And it should be a nice little straight line within boundaries. But what they found was just, you know, spikes and, and it's supposed to be additive and it would go down. We weren't able to find out what went on in Alachua County because they did not provide the cast vote records. 43 counties did, but we were not able to get them, although 18 different people requested them. Um, we got no responsive records exist was the answer. Forgetting to do this here. Okay, vote by mail issues. Um, in Alachua County, according to the SOE's own records, and um, every six months they put out a report of the list maintenance, um, or excuse me, this is um, mail issues, excuse me, uh, for signature matching. Like I was talking about, we go and look at the signatures. This is their statistics about in 2020, the general election, they said that 0.079% of the signatures on the vote by mail um, were rejected. 49 out of 61,819 mail-in ballots only. And it's interesting in 2022, it's the exact same statistic. Miss Jess, I, I don't, I don't know how many slides you got here, but I just want to make sure you've got about a minute and a half left, okay. and I want you to get to the slide that has your website and your Facebook and how yes, people can contact you and all that kind of stuff. So just to, don't let the time creep up on you. Okay. So what I just wanted to say was that there was a lot of things that were concerning, and as I went through, I was not reassured. Polling place changes um, have led to voter confusion. Um, when the lawsuit came out that uh, the SOE fell and um, she sued the churches, a lot of churches changed um, from being polling locations. So there's going to be voters going to the wrong precincts. So um, what I do need is help to get my name on the ballot. I need petitions signed. Um, I still need about a thousand of them. We've been working on it since August. but. Um, coming in in a trickle and we kind of need an avalanche if I'm going to get my name on the ballot. And um, it's either that or $10,000. So I prefer to have the petitions. And um, I also would need donations to fund the campaign because I certainly can't do it alone. I need support from family, friends, and most importantly, if I get that far, I would love to have your vote. And thank you so much for listening. Um, I do have a website, uh, Jensen for Alachua, and um, I'm on Facebook also. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Does the cruise have any questions for Ms. Jensen before she goes? <laughs> we always uh, appreciate everybody that takes the step and puts their name out there. We know how hard it is, how much work, time away from the family. So thank you for, uh, for doing what you're doing. We thank appreciate it. Thank you for the that. opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, next up is the item that's moved. This is um, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, two meetings ago, some time ago. I don't know. Time's running forward. You guys asked, uh, our, we had the Yes Newberry parents came and asked if our financial team would review the budget and come back and make sure that it's feasible, sustainable, it's going to work. So Dallas, tell us what you found when you looked at the, the material. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, as the mayor uh, mentioned, uh, several weeks ago, the commission asked uh, management to look into the Yes Newberry plan. Uh, we have done our due diligence to the best of our ability to review that plan, and we're here tonight to report on our findings. If I could have a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just wing it. Um, so starting with the, uh, the timeline, just as a, as a recap for the commission, on February 19th, Yes Newberry announced their plan to convert three Newberry schools to public charter schools. Uh, the following day, uh, three parents delivered letters to the schools requesting that a vote uh, to convert to charter schools occur. Um, 
since that time, yes, Newberry has held several town halls on the issues, and there's been, uh, I'll describe it as a lively debate in the community on the merits of the plan. Uh, the vote is scheduled for April 5th and April 8th through 12th. Uh, more information can be found on Yes Newberry's website. Uh, on April 17th, the vote will be counted and election results will be announced. Subsequent to that, if the vote passes for any of the three schools, uh, Yes Newberry and the city will begin an application process um, and negotiations with the Alachua County Public School System to begin the charter conversion. In August of 2025, the Newberry public charter school system would begin to operate. So the commission asked us to look into three different items, uh, the Yes Newberry budget proposal, uh, impact fees for funding schools, and the management and operations of a charter school system. So beginning with the budget, uh, Yes Newberry has developed a three-year preliminary budget. That budget was developed using the charter support unit's budget template at the city's request. Uh, the Charter Support Unit is a nonprofit which is funded through uh, the U.S. Department of Education, the Walton Foundation, and the Florida Department of Education, and its sole purpose is to provide support to charter schools within their first five years. Their budget document provides standard formulas as well as um, different fields for charter schools. It walks you through all of the different aspects of a charter school, uh, including, you know, such things as how many books should you buy for students, how much should you budget for facility repairs based off the size of your facilities, those sorts of things. Uh, to reiterate, the budget was developed by Yes Newberry, however there was input from city staff on various things such as you know, what our benefits package would look like for teachers, how much utilities cost, those sorts of things. In addition to the um, experts that Yes Newberry has, the city requested independent review of their budget from the Charter Support Unit and from other charter school operators uh, in the state of Florida. Uh, they have all provided their input and uh, reviewed the, the budget, and we've provided that input to Yes Newberry, who has responded. All in all, the budget that they have presented appears to be materially sound. Uh, there is funding in the budget for all the current programs uh, at or above the funding levels from Alachua County Public Schools. Uh, we did vouch uh, their budget to the school's budget uh, to verify that. And so, uh, as I said, appears to be materially sound. Now, so how many, you said you sent it out to various groups. How many other folks outside of Newberry, how many entities have reviewed the budget and come to that conclusion? to the charter Two support others. unit, and then uh, we asked for a review from uh, Cape Coral, who provided their input. Okay, thank you. Uh, on school impact fees, uh, as a reminder to the commission, an impact fee is a one-time capital charge imposed on developers by a local government to help fund the capital cost of additional public services, uh, which are necessitated by and attributed to the new development. Um, we spoke to our, char our, I'm sorry, our impact fee uh, attorney who assisted us with our adoption of impact fees last year. Um, her recommendation is that currently state law does not allow for a city to adopt school impact fees. Um, so, you know, currently we can't adopt impact fees for, for charter schools. Um, but I did provide here a 2020 study from Alachua County Public Schools of what their impact fees could potentially look like and they're trying about $7,000 uh, for a single family home. And Dallas, is it, am I right to say that the, the fly in the ointment to pursue the impact fees, and we can still pursue a legislative change in Tallahassee, I think that we also, the proposal here is unique enoughly different that I don't know, I mean, there's certainly expert opinion, but this is a, this is a unique proposal, so I'm not willing to say goodbye to the impact fees, but it's really the impact fee. If this was just the city of Newberry, if there weren't unincorporated or the city of Archer, then that encumbrance wouldn't be there. It's the fact that we have the zone as in the proposal is includes more than just in Newberry, and that's where the problem is. So you'd be that is my imposing it on Newberry residents, not on Archer residents, not on unincorporated, and that's where the un inequity would lie. Correct. You, you would be imposing a fee on some people who receive the benefit and not on others who receive the benefit. Right. Okay. Uh, moving into the management and operations of the charter uh, school system, uh, the current proposal uh, proposes that the city would employ uh, all employees of the charter school system and provide administrative support for the charter school system. In Yes Newberry's budget proposal, they have included the following 
uh, positions that the city requested in order to help support the charter school system. That's a superintendent, an additional accountant, additional HR staff, uh, additional facilities and maintenance staff, IT staff, and they've included auditing and legal fees, as well as a management fee to the city for general overhead. Uh, we'll say yes, Newberry has been very flexible and open, receptive to the city's requests and concerns. Uh, any issues that we've had with the proposal, they have addressed uh, in a timely manner. Uh, we did speak to Cape Coral about how they manage their charter school system. Uh, they reported they have no major concerns. Uh, the charter school system doesn't provide them any more headaches than any of their other departments uh, do, um, that it runs uh, smoothly. Um, and they did say that their community does love their charter school system. Uh, we also worked with our auditors, facilities teams, IT companies, insurance providers, legal, and as many other stakeholders as we could to vet, vet the plan for uh, the city running the charter school system. And again, the plan appears to be materially sound. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my presentation. All right, Commission, questions, I think we've all been, you know, we've, we've watched the Facebook chatter and we got a lot of experts on social media, but I, you know, one of the reasons why I appreciated the Yes Newberry folks coming and asking for your opinion is, you know, your team has won the highest award in the country for the last five years in a row for transparency and accounting. So if you say it, then I say, okay, I've got somebody here that I know that's not part of this, that's reviewed it. So questions for Dallas? No, not for me. No. Thank you, Dallas. All right. You're welcome. So that was three three separate entities, <laughs> two separate entities outside of you reviewing right. it. Okay. All right. We appreciate it. We'll see how the folks vote, and then we'll go from there. All right, folks, we come to two-minute public announcements. So your commission likes to hear from you often and frequently. So if, if you want to, if you're here to talk about something that's not on the agenda item, you have two minutes to, to do so. Uh-huh. Don't everyone jump up at one time? Come on down. Was that the um, city uh, accountant who was just speaking? Correct, okay. our CFO. Okay, I have a question, I guess, I'm not sure who to direct it to, maybe the CFO. Maybe we can get an answer about the budget. This is public comment, so it's not sure. a question and answer. Okay. So if you you can read the questions in, and we'll take note of them, sure. and then we'll try to get back to you. So one of my concerns is, looking at that budget, I looked at the facilities cost for that budget that was recently released, and I did not see any costs for renting the portables. And that is a very significant cost. We're talking about 14 portables at about $50,000 a year um, for Newberry Elementary. There are three or four at Oakview and three at Newberry. That's about a million dollars. So I just wanted to make sure that that was addressed in that budget. So that's my question and my concern. Um, I also have some other concerns. Um, <sighs> The budget looks like it was run through with all three schools together, but Newberry Elementary School might be operating on a deficit. So what would happen if two of the schools don't pass and Newberry Elementary alone? Um, I'm also curious to know how the city could guarantee continued financial support in the future. This seems like a long game kind of goal and endeavor. And um, what happens you know, if the city at what point would the city retract itself and what would the implications be for others if this was not um, fiscally operable? Um, the number one reason charter schools fail is because of financial difficulties. So those are my concerns. Thanks. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Any other public comments? Doesn't have to be on the agenda tonight. Okay. Seeing none, we will move to consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as it was published. Thank you. I have a motion from Commissioner Clark, second from Commissioner Maison. All those in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to our first public hearing ordinance, item 8, golf carts on city streets ordinance oh. amendments. <laughs> well, you got to let, you gotta let Brian at least talk. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, this is all right. so I'll go ahead and read it by time. Go ahead, please, please sir. First, no reason reason. not efficient. Revi revising the requirements of individuals operating golf carts on city streets within the city of Newberry, Florida, revising section 94-38 of the city of Newberry Code of Ordinances, amending the definition of what is an operator, repealing all ordinances in conflict, providing an effective date. The appropriate motion is passed ordinance number 2024-12 uh, upon its reading by title only. 
Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Thomas, tell us what's not working. What, what do we got to change here? <laughs> well, number one, uh, Mr. Major, Mayor, not Newbury's gold card ordinance, but <laughs> golf card ordinance. Little typo. So. <laughs> what page in the packet is it on? Do you know off the top of your head? 30. Okay. Everybody going to item 30. So basically, Mr. Mayor, um, in about 2016, the city of Newbury passed an ordinance allowing for uh, golf carts to be uh, used for transportation on city streets within the jurisdiction of the uh, city of Newbury. Uh, and that ordinance was based on allowable state statutes, which provided for the same. Last year, in 2023, the state legislature did make some modifications to that, primarily centered around the um, requirements for drivers under the age of 18 and drivers over the age of 18. And so um, the amended statute basically says that if you are under the 18, age of 18, you must have either a valid learner's driver's license or you have to have an actual driver's license. If you are 18 or over, then you just have to have a government-issued ID card, picture ID, photo ID card. And that's essentially the, the primary difference right there. Where right now our ordinance, based on the previous state statute, allows for anyone 15 and older to drive uh, a golf cart on city streets regardless of their licensure. And so um, ordinance 2024-12 just brings the city's ordinance in compliance with state statutes. So recommend, uh, staff recommends approval of ordinance 2024-12 on first reading, and if approved, we'll be back for second reading on April 8th. Now. So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Mazon. Second. Second from Commissioner Martin. Questions? I know this is crazy, but so if you're over 18, you don't have to have a driver's license. But if you're under 18, you got to have a driver's license. This don't make no sense. I think it's a maturity thing. It don't matter. You see what I mean here? I mean, they just created something that's, yep. this is government at its best, I'm just telling you. Mr. Mayor, to uh, Commissioner Clark's point, the city could go a step further and say, you got to have a driver's license if you're over 18 as well. well <laughs> you can be, is, you can be more strict. The law here, Brian. Mm -hmm. So if you're under 18, you have to have a license. Mm -hmm. But if you're over 18, it don't matter. You can just drive in. Yes, sir. So, I mean, why can't a kid 16 have a, a photo ID? I can only we'll assume it's a maturity thing. We'll yes. I'm, just, I'm just saying this is a common sense thing here. This ain't rocket science. Yeah. I mean, I'd settle for just uh, you know, having two or three or four yeah. kids on a golf cart instead of you know, 15 hanging that, off the roof. I understand the yeah. thing, but it's amazing that they did this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you got a driver's license, everybody needs a driver's license. It's not rocket surgery. <laughs> Any other questions, <laughs> comments? I have a motion from Commissioner Mays on second by Commissioner Martin. Uh, I'm sorry, public comment on the motion on the floor. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Commissioner Fondra, will you have me on them cheese rounds there? I've been eyeballing them all night. They just, they look so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's going to move us to item nine, which is also second reading this request for the NC Ranch Plan Development. Mr. Attorney, would you please read on second reading into the record ordinance 2023-23 slash CPA 23-06. Mr. Mayor, this is an ordinance of the City of Newbury, Florida, amending ordinance number 4-91 as amended relating to the amendment of the future land use plan map of the City of Newbury Comprehensive Plan under the expedited amendment procedures established in sections 163 Point three one eight four subparagraph two and three of the Florida statutes and in conformance with sections one six three point three one six one through one six three point three two one five of the Florida statutes, providing for a change in future land use classification from agricultural to plan development on certain lands within the corporate limits of the city of Newbury, Florida, more particularly described in Exhibit A to the ordinance, consisting of approximately 1,293 acres, providing severability, repealing all ordinances in conflict, providing an effective date, the appropriate motion is to pass ordinance number 2023-23, CPA 23-06, upon its reading by title only. Thank you, sir. John Paul, yes, take us through it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the record, John Paul Perez, Planning and Economic Development Department. The item before you tonight is the um, 
future land use map amendment for a project known as NC Ranch Plan Development, um, the big one that's been on the news and everybody's talking about. This is second reading, so I'm going to give you a very brief presentation, but I do want to um, preface this presentation with tonight we have the comprehensive plan items on the agenda. What is not on the agenda is the rezoning. Uh, the rezoning, we are planning on having a special meeting on April 15th. If you haven't been contacted yet to confirm a quorum, we will be reaching out to you shortly to confirm that there is a quorum. That is the third Monday of April. Uh, the rezoning application has the development order attached to it. The development order is where um, staff and the applicant have been busy for the past few months ironing out all the details of how the development will unfurl over the next 50 years. So you're not going to get a lot of that tonight. Um, this is second reading for the comprehensive plan. This is just land use um, and following this is uh, specific locations that uh, sub-element that we're adding to it just to enable it and give some um, guiding principles for the development as it occurs over the next 50 years. Guardrails, we like to call them. Um, so uh, I'll just give you a brief timeline, a summary of the request, our findings, as well as the findings of uh, Francis Marino, uh, consultant um, for staff, and then um, the recommended motion, which has not changed. Um, so on October 25th, uh, we had the PCB hearing, or the Planning and Zoning Board hearing, um, that moved through with a recommendation for approval, bless you. On uh, December 4th um, was the hearing for the text amendment that was added after the initial zoning and land use, um, just to give the land use um, feet to stand on um, as far as um, long-range planning goes. The, on December 12th, which was a special meeting for the City Commission, we then separated, bless you. Right. I'm right there with you. So I'm just getting over a something, pollen, I'm not sure, yeah. Um, that's where we reoriented the request to have the comprehensive plan as well as the text amendment moving together. Uh, December 20th, um, after um, approval of the first reading, we transmitted it out to the reviewing agencies. That includes the Florida Department of State, Florida Department of Transportation, Florida Department of Education, Florida Department of Trans... Uh, did I see transportation already? <laughs> no, we'll throw it in there again. They're a big one. Um, Swanee River Water Management District, um, Alachua County, uh, et cetera. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. North Regional, uh, North Florida Regional Planning Council is the, the last one. Um, there were no objections to the requests um, as they were presented to them. So the one uh, request was that they be um, continually engaged throughout the planning process for this project. So they're treating it like any other project that's come before them. They just want to be engaged so mitigation can happen as the project gets built. And then we are here today for the second reading. Um, and second reading, if we approve every, or if the board approves everything tonight, uh, they have land use and a text amendment, uh, but they can't do anything without the rezoning. So the rezoning still needs to come back to the board. Um, the rezoning still needs to be approved. Um, and as um, I, I introduced or um, led with at the beginning, it's, it, it really is the meat and potatoes of the request because um, it does um, really get to the nitty-gritty details uh, that I both believe the commission as well as uh, the citizenry wants to know. Um, so we'll be back with that. And that still has two hearings in front of it, um, so we'll have uh, plenty to talk about. So again, we're here with the future land use map. Sorry, I said this was going to brief, but I'm taking a long time. Um, here's the location of the property within the city limits, uh, within the urban service area, which is the red um, the property being in purple. Um, uh, the request in summary is 4,500 dwelling units and 700,000 square feet of non-residential use, including 250 assisted living facility beds. Um, the request is to change the land use from agriculture to planned development. Um, it is located within the urban services area, uh, which is intended to support urban type development. Um, FDOT uh, returned with a letter saying, engage us, keep engaging us um, at each phase, and we do. 
Uh, we send it to them at the beginning of each phase um, as part of the final development plan. Um, those are construction plans and final plats. So as soon as we get that construction plan, uh, we're going to reach out to them and uh, move forward from there. Elijah County Growth Management Department and the Environmental Protection Department um, did review. They had noted um, continual engagement regarding impacts to Northwest 46th Avenue, which is a road that they do provide maintenance for. Um, they did note some pits and dumps on the property, some uh, sinkholes, as well as um, some of those uh, pits or sinkholes have water at the bottom of them. So uh, they, um, the one thing they can preempt local governments over is water quality, and um, they do have a standing um, policy countywide for water quality in which we have to guide the applicants back to the county to um, get over that. Uh, so the Florida Department of Commerce, Environmental Protection, um, State, uh, and all the other agencies um, did return with no objection to the request. So there is not uh, an objection from these other reviewing agencies. Um, as is being presented to you now. So, um, staff's findings. So we, um, we're here um, on the premise that it's been approved at Planning and Zoning Board with a recommendation. Um, it's been approved at first reading. Um, that it also has been up to all of the reviewing agencies um, that have resources that may be impacted by this development, and they've said no objection um, to the request. Um, and so our findings still remain the same, um, unchanged. Uh, we are re re uh, recommending adoption of the ordinance tonight and uh, permission to go ahead and just transmit it to the state afterwards just to let them know it's been adopted. That completes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, John Paul. Do we have questions for staff? <coughs> Commissioner Martin. John Paul, the letter agencies were uh, passing along their approval without objection on just the Fluma, right? Not the whole Correct. project or anything, because that's not technically presented yet. Correct. They look at the land use change. Thank you, sir. Okay. No other questions? So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Coleman, second from Commissioner Clark. Any comments, questions on the motion from the dais? Public comments or questions, come on down. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. Uh, Jerry Dienbach, agent for the applicant. Uh, so that you can get on to for <coughs> future celebrations here with mm -hmm. Commissioner Farnsworth, we'd just like to incorporate all the previous presentations, the application materials and staff report into the record, and all the competent substantial evidence that has been placed during the course of these actions. So I'll forego any presentation tonight so you can get on with the uh, cheese wheel. We appreciate it. That cheese was tasty. It was tasty. Other public comments? Seeing none. Uh, come back to vote. All those in favor, say bye by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. It's going to move us to item 10, comprehensive plan text amendment related to the NC Ranch plan development. Mr. Attorney, would you please, on second reading, read ordinance 2023-36 slash CPA 23-12 into the record. Yes, sir. This is an ordinance of the city of Newbury, Florida, amending ordinance number 4-91 as amended relating to a text amendment of the future land use element of the city of Newbury comprehensive plan under the expedited amendment procedure procedures established in sections 163.3184 subparagraphs 2 and 3 of the Florida statutes and in conformance with sections 163.3161 through 163.3215 of the Florida statutes, providing for a specific locations sub-element for a project known as NC Ranch per plan development on certain lands within the corporate limits of the city of Newberry, Florida, providing servability, repealing all ordinances in conflict, and providing an effective date. The appropriate motion is to pass ordinance number 2023-36 upon reading by its first or second reading by title only. Thank you, sir. John sir. Paul, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, John Paul Perez, Planning and Economic Development Department. This is the second reading of Ordinance 2023-36. This is the text amendment uh, component of the ranch. This is a specific location sub-element that we're adding to the future land use element. Uh, we had deleted a bunch of them out um, previously in 2022. We're just adding this one back in because it's an active project that um, does need um, guidance, um, not just for us, but um, staff in you know, 25 years from now, they need to see kind of um, what this commission did as far as adopting it. So I'm going to give you a summary of <laughs> what he will be going for that 61. Um, I'm going to 
give you a brief summary of the requests, our findings, and the recommended motion. There was mo one minor change that came as part of the negotiation process for the development order. Um, same timeline as uh, you heard previously, so I won't bore you with that. This is the text amendment that you're voting on right now. Um, and ultimately, it, it just provides a planning horizon and memorializes a ceiling and policies for the land use as they relate to the level of service. So. Um, one change was to policy SP 1.5.5 regarding neighborhood parks. Um, they were originally presented to the commission to be a quarter mile from each residence. Um, in discussing and getting more details on the plan, we've increased that distance to a half mile. These are parks that are within the development uh, that residents can walk to. So these are parks outside, solely inside. Um, and that will be memorialized um, not only in the, uh, in the comprehensive plan, but also in the development order. Um, findings remarkably similar to what was presented to the board last time, and our motion is still to adopt this ordinance on second reading. Um, as stated previously, this doesn't go anywhere without the rezoning, so uh, we'll be back with that on April 15th. Thank you. That completes my presentation. Okay. Does the commission have any questions for John Paul? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Coleman, second from Commissioner Martin. Any comments, questions on the floor from the dais? Public comments or questions on the motion on the floor? Come on down and get. He, he thinks. <laughs> you almost hit the ceiling now. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm good for ceiling fans and light bulbs. Yeah. Uh, again, Jerry Diedenbach, thank you. And we'd just like to, again, forego any presentation and incorporate all the previous presentations, the application materials, staff report, and of course the competent substantial evidence that's been brought to this commission uh, into tonight's approval. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other public comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. That's going to take us to our first agenda item, which is Capital Improvement Revenue Bonds Reimbursement Resolution 2024-09. It's a resolution of the City Commission, <coughs> of the City Commission, with respect to reimbursement of certain costs. Dallas, you want to? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. The, as you know, the City anticipates issuing capital improvement revenue bonds uh, in May uh, for the construction of the City's new City Hall. The resolution before you tonight allows the City to expend funds towards that project and reimburse any costs uh, once those bonds have been issued. Uh, which will enable us to have flexibility and delay bond sales until such a time as interest rates become more favorable. Essentially, if um, once the city commission authorizes the sale of the bonds, if something crazy happens and interest rates go through the roof, um, we can delay the sale of those bonds until the interest rates are more favorable to the city but continue to spend money underneath those bonds and reimburse ourselves. Okay. Commissioner Mark. Uh, do we have a cap on that anywhere? It, it would be up to the uh, issue amount, which is currently $6 million. How much? $6 million. I would not necessarily. Okay. Start over again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the city of Newberry anticipates issuing capital improvement revenue bonds in May to construct a new city hall. Right. The resolution before the commission tonight allows the city to expend funds towards that project and reimburse these expenses once the bonds have been issued. This will enable the city flexibility to delay the bond sales until such a time as interest rates are more favorable if needed. So the city, we're going to bring a bond resolution at the end of May to sell uh, public offered bonds. If, for example, the next day, Russia invades somebody else and interest rates spike. We could delay those bond sales until the interest rates came back down, but not delay the project uh, and begin spending money from the bond sales and reimburse ourselves. So we would essentially be using our reserves, cool. and then once the bonds are sold, reimburse the reserves. Oh, that's so been a concern. It's, so. it's a protection yeah. for the city. Yeah. Okay. And the municipal bonds for the people that have money. That's really good yeah, no. Still tax That's not <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> okay, any other questions? 
Uh, Mr. Attorney, would you please read the resolution by title? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, this is resolution number 2024-09, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Newbury, Florida, with respect to reimbursement of certain costs and expenditures relating to the public improvements in and for the City of Newbury, Florida. Appropriate motion is to pass resolution 2024-09 upon its reading by title only. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Farnsworth, a second from Commissioner Maison. Any comments, questions on the motion on the floor from the dais? Public comments or questions on the motion on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor, say by saying aye. Commissioner uh, Coleman? Aye. Commissioner Clark? No. Commissioner Farnsworth? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Maison? Aye. Motion passes 4 to 1 with Commissioner Clark in dissent. All right, that moves us to item 12, solid removal, solids removal for wastewater treatment facility effluent pond. Mr. Green, come on down and tell us about uh, Good afternoon, fluid. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, Rance Green, Utilities. Uh, I'm here to talk with you guys about our wastewater pond. Uh, the City of Newberry's wastewater treatment facility includes an effluent disposal system that consists of two line ponds and a pumping station and a slow rate, slow rate land application spray field. Treated wastewater effluent can be directed to a large lined effluent pond for land application or the small pond reject pond. The small reject pond serves two purposes functions depending on the plant's operational needs. A storage facility for treated effluent to be sent when it does not meet the requirement of this discharge of the discharge permit in this scenario is a slowly return to the headworks of the plant. During this period a low flow for additional treatment to ensure the meets permit requirements before discharging to the spray fields. A backup storage facility enables the primary large storage facility to be removed from service and drained to facilitate maintenance and repair for the liner. A few weeks ago, a sinkhole occurred in the northwest corner of the smallest reject pond. It occurred when the city was processing, <coughs> in the process of draining the large pond to facilitate uh, ex evaluation of large repairs to the pond. The sinkhole resulted in the failure of the liner serving the smaller pond, enabling approximately 500,000 gallons of treated effluent to be released into the ground. It also forced the city to place the large pond back into operation, refilling it with treated effluent to maintain wastewater treatment of incoming raw wastewater. Now that the repair to a small reject pond is complete, staff is focused on completing repairs to the lined to the liner of the large pond. There exists an accumulation of organics in the bottom of the large waste pond that must be removed, uh, allowing access, access to make the repairs. Staff solicited proposal from two firms for, to, to remove. A. Able Septic Sewer Service provided the lowest cost. Staff seeks authorization to proceed with removal, uh, removal for work for, for removal so A. Able can do the work. Uh, staff believes the cost incurred to remove the organics from the effluent pond are insured <clears throat> and will be covered by insurance. Staff met with the city's insurance provider to confirm the costs are reimbursable. They indicated they believe the costs are insured, but they, their underwriters make the final decisions. Since the sludge removal must occur to repair the damaged liner, staff recommends the city proceed with work now to seek reimbursement from the insurance provider at the appropriate time. This places the cost of the work at risk, but staff notes the risk is low. Further, staff notes the work must be done to complete whether insured or not. Um, staff recommendation is to uh, authorize city manager to execute a contract with A. Able Septic Service to not exceed total amount of $225,000 at the price included in their proposal, drafted on March 18, 2024. Feces is expensive. Yeah. Say so feces is expensive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. You got any questions for Mr. Green, Mr. Martin? No. Sir. No. No. Commissioner Farnsworth. With um, yeah, with that uh, amount, does it need to be bid out or? We don't. I, I, I took proposals, uh, so I don't. I got to try to get three quotes. Um, so that would be a question for. We just took proposals. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, typically uh, we would require uh, this amount to be bid, but due to the urgency of the situation, uh, we went with three quotes, and due to the fact that we are very confident that we'll be reimbursed by insurance, okay. uh, we just didn't have, we don't have time to bid this project out. Um, the thing is, what, uh, is this company approved? Will 
approved by the insurance company or do they need to be approved by the insurance company? Uh, the insurance company has been involved in this conversation from the very beginning. Uh, as Mr. Green indicated, the insurance company is highly confident that this will be approved, but they have to get their T's and I's crossed. Um, they do not need to approve the vendor, they just need to okay. approve the work. And our, our, under, our insurance agent has told the city to move ahead with this work. Okay, is there any way we can buy some shovels for like Mike New to go out there and... He's got about five of us. Absolutely. They give me a tiny cup. We have a golden show. Any other uh, questions? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Maison. Any comments, questions, motion for the dice? Public comments or questions on the motion on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Good job, Mr. Green. That takes us to comments. City Manager. Wow, Mr. Mayor, way to burn through a three-page agenda like that. Uh, very impressive, and I do have a, a couple of items. A reminder to everyone that Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. Um, that we will be conducting or, or holding a grand opening event for the ASO's Newberry Precinct. It will be at the location, which is 22211 West Newberry Road, right next to Ultimate Boat Storage. So the sheriff will be there with his entire gang. It's kind of their event, but um, because we are partnered up with them in law, law enforcement, the commission is invited as guest of honor, and we hope everybody have a turn, good turnout and a good time. Mr. Mayor, just report that um, I'm certain the community is seeing it and feeling it. The natural gas pipeline construction continues, so the contractor is making good progress. The, what they consider phase one, they did testing on last week. It'll be very soon ready to be placed into service. It'll be served initially by temporary uh, tanks uh, that are located just north of City Hall uh, until they get a permanent pipeline constructed to uh, to just the other side of Trenton. They're going to they're gonna make a connection to the Florida gas transmission main west of Trenton. But um, we'll start seeing hookups happen in April. Um, the homes will be converted. They're primarily targeting uh, Newtown 1894 and portions of Newberry Oaks because those uh, subdivisions are already served with LP gas and connecting to those pipelines will help them uh, bring on a lot of customers at one time. They can get the most bang for their buck there and then they'll start expanding into other neighborhoods. I think highest on their priority list are three schools. So, and I'm told that this will reduce people's LP gas bill by just about 50%. So if you've been paying you know, $100 a month for gas service, um, you'll see a nice little reduction in those costs once we get the LP gas systems hooked up. Um, Mr. Mayor, just for the commission's awareness, um, we initiated a partnership with Archer and High Springs and the city attorney's office to um, conduct periodic meetings to discuss concurrency. When we're uh, discussing development uh, in our public meetings, uh, the number one biggest concern is, is are we planning for infrastructure to serve uh, this type of expansion and, uh, and growth? And the answer is, that, oh, absolutely we are. Now, we're not in charge of all of the infrastructure that, that we are monitoring. Uh, we're, we're currently not in charge of schools. I guess that could change. Uh, but uh, things like the landfill capacity, uh, most transportation concurrency is not uh, within our control, but we monitor it all. And so we partnered up with High Springs, with Archer, the city attorney's office, to get us all really well versed in speaking out of the, the, the same uh, book on how we handle things about when, when we apply um, reservations of capacity and development, what step in new development does that happen? Hopefully by t taking the effort in 2024 to get really well versed on it as we move forward uh, and the Commission has questions, we're better able to articulate to the Commission and to the community that we are indeed paying attention to uh, uh, important critical infrastructure and that we are planning for the growth that is coming to Newberry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just uh, reporting, you, we've seen that FDOT is uh, working on sidewalks in town. 
that is a project I, I think I've mentioned to the commission before. We submitted that request uh, for uh, those sidewalks in 2015. So here we are a short nine years later and DOT is performing it, but they're doing terrific work. The next segment is going to be the piece from south, from State Road 26 south to Southwest 15th on the east side of the road. So it's going to go down by uh, New Bev's, going to go by the uh, coffee shop, the old coffee shop, the blend, and then by the elementary school. And like every good project in Newberry, nothing's easy. So uh, there simply isn't enough room most of the way in DOT's right of way to get a sidewalk in there. Um, I guess what we'd call safely. Uh, so we are working with property owners all down that um, that corridor, it's including the school case. board, asking for sidewalk yeah. easements. So if you, you hear people say, you know, what is it that, that Newberry's after, uh, we are trying to get a seven and a half foot wide sidewalk easement to get that sidewalk further out of the way. DOT will build it and DOT will pay for it. I mean, and maintain it once it's built, if we can obtain those land rights. Um, I caution the community, if we can't get the land rights, the project probably won't move forward. That, that's a, it, it is that tight in there. There's no way to kind of skinny it in there and just and hope it'll be safe. It doesn't meet standards. If we can't get additional land rights, that'll be the end of the project. And then uh, finally, Mr. Mayor, just reporting that uh, and asking the commission to be thinking about, uh, we're going to be uh, developing our agenda for a joint meeting with Alachua County um, Board of County Commissioners. Um, we'll finalize that agenda next week sometime, so we'll probably reach out to you and just one last round of do you have any project ideas or discussion topics. The latest reports we got back from the commission was um, try to keep it to one or two items, no more, because right. the, the meetings last all night. So, yeah. uh, so that's too much. Focused on. Exactly. So, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my rather lengthy comments at the tail end of a very short meeting. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have one more item uh, to mention. It's a no, no, wait, you already called it. That's it's a, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> surprise to us all. Let's see what it is. Um, oh, the on consent tonight, one of the consent items, just to um, publicly uh, uh, announce it, was the authorization for a $1 million grant uh, to move forward with a $1 million grant that we received from the Florida legislature. And that, that is actually... You know, the uh, legislature likes to poke at local government for being slow. That was an appropriation we got in the 23 legislative session. Uh, so now the 24 legislative session has completed, and there's more funding coming to us. But they're running about a year behind. But we are excited to get a million dollars on what appears to be a $6 million con project. Uh, and what's that million dollars go toward? Remind me again. Elevated storage tank yeah, yeah. east of town. Make sure we have fire flow capacity and water pressure. Uh, that's more of that planning for infrastructure uh, so mm -hmm. that we have it there for growth. And the other item that was in our uh, consent agenda tonight was uh, a grant we've received in the amount of $150,000. It's for vulnerability assessment. And it'll help us identify some problem areas, but more importantly, you can't apply for grant funding for those problem areas without completing this assessment. So step number one is getting the assessment done. It'll identify a list, and then we will go seek grant funding to address those, uh, those vulnerable areas that have been identified. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, and that concludes my comment. So what we need to do is think about what we want nine years from now. <laughs> exactly. And we'll ask for it now, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm I kid, all right? Sidewalks, grants, we'll take them on time or late, anytime. Mr. Journey, you got any comments tonight? Just Monty, I'm um, you know real pleased to see you recognized like that, and and I'm very honored to have served with you. It's uh, you know you mentioned mentally Norfleet, she did a lot to begin my career, and a wonderful person to have this building named for next door. I live off of Farnsworth Road, so I guess it was just one of those things that was meant to be in in my life. But you mentioned Lois and um, and Andy. The people that have come through this commission are just just wonderful, wonderful people, and I'll stack up this city against any city, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere, for the the level of service that our public servants has, 
have provided and also the diversity and, and what everybody's brought to the table in making this community just, just a great place to work for a lot of years. And you know, it doesn't seem like it's been this long. It's gone by really quick in a lot of ways, but I'm, I'm very pleased and honored to have served with you. Were you uh, attorney in Mason Mm hmm I was. I was. Yeah. I think that's the year I became the actual city attorney. Mr. Folds had been sending me since 1980, but but I I think I became the city attorney in 86. He wanted to see Monday Night Football, so he... That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Newberry Road was too late. We could leave... 6.30, get here by just almost, maybe 7, and he'd always say, well, the railroad caught us, and, and, uh, <laughs> and then we'd be out of here in about 30 minutes. That was, that was typical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Madam Clerk, do you have any comments? I just want to follow up on the attorney's comments. Um, Commissioner Farnsworth, I've enjoyed serving with you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, Meeting you too. I enjoyed all, all the time I spent with you and the previous city clerks have been with you. But, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Coleman. Money. It's been an honor uh, serving with you, and I uh, hope. Uh, you're here for another 20 years right here on the dice. You make very sound decisions and study it really well. And, um, you know, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should say. You love him. <laughs> I do. I love him. I mean, who don't? Uh, this is just the way it is. But, no, um, I'll show you a few. I'm really honored to be serving with you I'll up here. I suppose to tell you a couple <laughs> Commissioner Clark. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I got a couple things. Number one, we still got the brick campaign going on for the Veterans Memorial. Uh, the brick campaign is going on for the Veterans Memorial. And uh, I know I want to follow up with the letters that we need. I think, staff, are we ready with the letters that we asked for last time for the. Yeah, it's been sent. They're all. Who, we, I didn't sign it. I signed it. You asked mayor the mayor to sign it. It was emailed to you. Well, one from all, but that's okay then. We need as many as we can get what we were trying to do, but uh, your signature will trump everybody, I suppose. Well, I thought I, I might have been I know, my I, I got it. I thought it was Maybe I'll get a uh, copy of that, Mike, and we'll in your add inbox. some more just to, to your, your box. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and I'd have another question. When the gas comes through, do we help the citizens transfer their homes that have the gas stoves or any of the gas stuff from the uh, propane back to the natural gas? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, since this is not a, a city-provided service, we do not. Okay. We, we are enabling the service to be here, it, and they're in our right-of-way by uh, permit. They have a franchise with the city. Uh, now, I understand that they are helping and I think that these connections, the way I understand it is, uh, the connections and the retrofit, when you go from LP gas to natural gas, there's a retrofit on, some, like the burners on the there stove, and uh, the LP gas uh, company, which is Florida Public Utilities, they are fronting the cost for all of that, and they get recouped through the tariff. There's like a two or three year tariff that applies for that transition and then they go on uh, and then you step into their regular rate structure. That's that's awesome to be able to, there is some change. Absolutely. Uh, and another thing, I'll just say, uh, you know, we got troops deployed and just keep all our troops in your prayers and God bless America. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Commissioner Farnsworth? Yeah. Good night. Yep. Hey, good serving with you. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's good serving with all the commissioners and the, uh, I was thinking that sometimes you, before you even get to the commission meeting, your your mind's kind of made up on, on, on regarding something, and then you hear the perspective of some of the other commissioners, and your mind changes. It's, it's kind of a, it's a good thing we have a, a group of different people up here to give the different opinions and their different perspectives. 
But uh, it's been a it's been a great 20 years, and I don't know whether there'll be another 20 years, but that's that's quite a long time. And I might be wanting to watch Monday Night Football myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but thanks everybody, and I really I really appreciate everything everybody has done. When you started meeting uh, Commissioner Farnsworth, were you in the municipal building, or were you were this city hall wasn't built yet? Yeah. So you met in the municipal building. Yeah, municipal building. Yeah. Mm. A lot of changes. Well, thank you, Monty. Commissioner Martin. Bonnie, you didn't uh, you didn't serve that twenty years continuous. How many different times have you been up here? Do you remember? Oh, it was a slide there. It's up on the screen. Yeah, there you go. Okay. How about that? Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Some days I got, sometimes I got fired. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Voluntarily or otherwise, right? Uh, no, congratulations. It's uh, well-deserved. Uh, I wanted to actually put a couple of dates in front of people. April 5th in particular, uh, the Newberry Elementary PTO has their fundraiser from 6 to 8. Uh, they are looking for uh, sponsors and volunteers. It runs from 6 to 8. It's a Friday night. Also coinciding with that is a night of faith at the Newberry High School, and that starts at 6.30. Uh, we'll probably run about an hour or so, so maybe you can bounce back and forth. And da, 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 da. the West Fest is April 20th, right around the corner, April April 20th. That's on a Saturday late afternoon into early evening. Um, obviously, we uh, spoke about the initiative tonight, and uh, that will start on the 5th. It'll run through the 8th and the 12th. Uh, I'm completely in support of converting them to the public charter schools. Uh, and really, for me, it boils down to a change in management. Uh, we are looking at the potential of changing the management of our school system from people down in Gainesville to people here locally. And as our logo says, we believe in Newberry. Uh, I think there is plenty of smart people in the room that can figure out any challenge that comes before us. Uh, and at the, at the end of the day, I trust uh, the people that I see uh, here in my community every day uh, to take ownership of that and do what's best for our kids. Um, as many of you know, I'm also the Alachua County Republican Chairman. Uh, Judith wonderfully serves with us as the uh, Secretary for our organization. So, uh, you know, the one thing about Judith is she is ultimately completely passionate about elections, uh, transparency, and serving the people of our community in that post, and she would be a wonderful addition uh, to Alachua County for sure. Uh, you know, elections can be very dry. Uh, some of the stuff that she she tells me and the level that she gets down into detail is just crazy. It makes my eyes cross, and I can't really even understand some of the language she uses. But she's got a passion for it, and I think she would uh, help serve our community well in that office as well. So that's all I got. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Commissioner Maison? Yes. I have a couple things. Not as much. But, uh, Monty, I think the, because I'm the newest commissioner on the, on the uh, dais, I think the first time I met you, actually met you because I deliver, um, I would deliver to your house all the time because you got a lot of stuff from Amazon. <laughs> got a lot. Job security is what I always say. And I remember you made it a point to, I guess, somehow contact UPS and say, I want my deliveries in the garage. I don't know if you remember that, but whenever I scan something, it would say, deliver in the garage, please. Deliver in the garage, please. Yeah. You know? And so I'd go to the garage, and I'm, buddy, I was like looking in your garage. I'm not looking in your garage, but I would see all the stuff that you would have. And I'm like, this is it, where you, you had a couple. I'm like, this is interesting, this is interesting, this is interesting, this is. I'm like, wow, this guy's got some collections there. I wonder if he's a collector. And then the first time I met you was when I became a commissioner, and I was like, holy smoke, Monty. And then we, I had my first uh, 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 conversation with you about some of your products and how, all, and then of course Star Wars. But anyways, so that was my first time ever meeting you, man. And it's been uh, he does have dry humor. Yeah. It really is. If you don't understand Monty, Monty is funny. It's just very dry, very very dry, <laughs> very dry but funny. There's a uh, fine line between collector and hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> I was, you know, I didn't say that, but uh, um, Spring Festival, yes, uh, one day after uh, Friday, next weekend, um, not this weekend, the following weekend, April 5th, 
from 9 to 4 o'clock. Um, it's going to be a nice turnout. I would like to invite everyone here and everyone that's listening. Um, let's see here. April 6th. April 6th. Yes, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to see you, by the way. I think I've already told you that. I haven't seen you in a while. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with Zeke today. Zeke, were you born before or after the, Jordan, the first pair of Jordans came out? After. You think it's after? When were you born? 99. You think it came after? No, I'm saying I was born after. You were born after? I'm with him on this. Okay. Yeah. You have, when do you think the first pair of Jordan came out? 80s, uh, 80s. I'd say early 80s. 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 85. Okay. Hey, you. <laughs> the first Air Jordan shoes were produced for basketball player Michael Jordan. Everybody knows that. If not, you should leave the room now. Okay. During this time, which the Chicago Bulls on November 17, 1984, and released one year later, April 1st, 1985. Bam. You nailed it. Bam. You nailed it. You nailed it. Are you a sneakerhead? No. Yes, he is. Don't let him fool you. I'm, I'm just proud. No, your comments. Can we Those are all my comments. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, I just uh, I want to say thank you to the community outpouring of support, uh, prayers for the family, um, for the young man that was lost. Uh, you know, Newberry thrives when we are when we come together and I know that whatever that family ends up needing and asking for we'll find, we'll figure out a way to come together and help out uh, but I just uh, you know I appreciate all the preachers in town um, asking for prayers and all the prayers that have been going around on social media uh, I, I should have said it um, because I, I should have eaten before I came out here my mind's been wandering but you know um, uh, Dallas reported that they're Currently, um, state law may not let us pass the impact fees, but I, to me, that wasn't really. It didn't register as a as a problem because the budget that you guys have seen has a one point eight million dollar surplus and it's got a seven hundred thousand dollar contingency fund, and that that's more than enough money for them to fund their own. Uh, you know, you guys take debt service out, so three four hundred thousand dollars a year, you can get. You know, you, we can build a five million dollar building. Immediately, so I don't think they're going to need impact fees in order to do this. That's how much. Once you cut the administrative costs, uh, the administrative bloating that's happening in Lodge County down that much, there is plenty of money in order to be able to fund these expansions, those kinds of things. I mean, the, the young woman who talked about um, spending fifty thousand dollars to rent portables every single year, uh, you could <laughs> you could almost build a building by the time that you've uh, um, you've been renting those for the last fifteen years, right? So. So I, I agree with Mr. Barden. I think that I trust the folks right here. Uh, I trust Dallas. When Dallas uh, opens up the books and he figures out how to make the, the numbers work, uh, it, he says the numbers work, that's all I, I need to hear, right, is our folks. So I did want to make, and I should have made that comment when we were talking about that. I apologize for letting my mind slip. So that's all I've got. Public comment. Come on down, sir. Who's this guy? Yeah, I just want to uh, thank y'all. Trip Norfleet. Yes. The commission and, and the mayor. And, and the Is your mayor. microphone on? Oh, we might have turned it off on here. Uh, just want to thank the, the mayor and the commission and, and uh, the city staff and all for uh, putting up with us going through this big process and, and getting this approved on the um, on the development there. And like I said, we're going to work really hard to make you guys proud of something y'all approved. I think it'll look really good and we're going to work out hard. If we mess it up, it's going to be because we worked hard at it <laughs> but uh and then Monty appreciate all your service and uh I, I talked to your brothers when they went outside and I was telling Mike I remember the best Pepsi's ever was right here in that store you'd reach down there be about half ice and everything else and uh and Monty's done a good job but his dad Mr. Charlie my grandma said for years that was the best commissioner they ever had and you know and like you said this development that we're trying to do now would not be possible because I remember Mr. Farnsworth fighting for that sewer plant and it was pretty pretty vicious at the time. You know, that was cutting edge back in the 70s and uh, and you know, like I said, they, the old saying is you stand on the shoulders of many come before you and and, uh, and, and like I said, they worked at it hard but, and um, best thing about Mr. Charlie's, I'd, get, I'd go in there and 
he'd let me charge him Cokes. <laughs> he could charge a Pepsi in there, but it was, uh, it was pretty cool. But like I said, we appreciate your service, everybody. And, and, um, and, and like I said, I just want to thank all you guys and the staff and everybody for uh, getting us approved. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, sir. Let me say, Commissioner Farnsworth. Um, I mean, the, people don't realize, but the city had, they really had to work to get our sewer plan. Even back then, we were ahead of the other cities in the area trying to get thing, getting things done. But we also had to fight really hard to get the, uh, it was a junior senior high school at the time uh, built. Uh, they uh, had, lo had to lobby the, the uh, school board and, and everything to get that done. It was, it was quite an endeavor. And one thing I do want to say is, I don't know if anybody remembers a, a Johnny Gill, but he, Johnny told me one day, he said, you want, you want some of the best biscuits in Newberry? I said, well, yeah. He said, come on. So we go over, we go to Mentally North Fleet's house. <laughs> and I started moving to the front door. He said, no, no, we got to go around to the back because she'll, she'll be in the kitchen this time of day. I said, okay. So he and I go in the back to, to hit up Miss North Fleet for some <laughs> For some biscuits by then, but it was just one of those things you did when you was a kid, you know, you just... Like, I don't remember ever just walking up somebody's back door and asking for a biscuit. But <laughs> it sounds like a pretty good... <laughs> Times were different. We, yeah. were, we weren't shy. <laughs> Big old cat heads. Uh, oh, that's... Oh, there, Paul. Come on down, sir. Uh, good evening. My name's Ted Abernathy. Um Congratulations, Com Commissioner Farnsworth, for your 20 years. I was an elected official myself for four years, and it was taxing enough I chose not to run again for re-election. Uh, the interesting thing about my campaign was I was actually an independent candidate for school board in a partisan race in Pennsylvania. I mean, you basically had to run in the primary as either a Republican or a Democrat. I got my own line as an independent, and that leads into the main part of my comments today, which is about election security. Um, I mean, I've been the whole precinct uh, supervisor, or like clerk in, in, in Florida. It's a different term in both Indiana and North Carolina where I've worked before. So I've done it in three states and probably about 20 different elections. So as an independent, I'm not going to uh, endorse Miss Judith or uh, Miss Kim I have nothing to do with any of that. I'm completely independent of that. But I wanted to mention two things that come off the top of my head about election security. One was about um, the uh, chain of custody of the flashcards that come off of the machines. I can tell you that here in Alachua County, uh, the procedures that's used to get that downtown as far as sealing it, who transports it, timing that, I mean, the person has only a certain amount of time to, to get down there. It's better than the two other states that I've worked in. Uh, the second thing is, just by chance, I was at the Canvas Board meeting, I think it was last Thursday, where they did go through the uh, mail-in ballots and the rejected signatures and stuff. And actually, in my humble opinion, they were very efficient about that. I mean, one of the things that they do is, if you mail in your ballot uh, three weeks early, and for example, if Commissioner Farnsworth signed his name Jimmy instead of Monty, or vice versa, or something like that, they would call you right then and get it corrected. So during those three weeks of mail-in balloting, they fixed most of the problems. The only things that they dealt with is the ones that they couldn't fix, which was about 20, as was mentioned before. Ten of them were no signature. Well, they, they just didn't reach those people. So the meeting started at four. They, pro they looked at all the, the bad ballots or the, the envelopes for them, but they could not actually vote on them until five o'clock. So that's why the meeting took an hour and a half. Really, the real, I mean, basically for half an hour they were just sitting because they had to wait for that time to, to come. 
So that's about all I have to say. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for all the volunteer work and for serving as elected official. Even well, if it was a different state. It's not, it, it's not volunteer. You got paid for it. Oh, okay. So well, congratulations. Please, if anybody wants to work in, the, in an election, they're desperate for looking yeah. for all, all the different poll workers. And there's different levels that, I mean, if you're, you want to do it for the first time, you get good training for it, too. Good. All right. Thank you for that. Other public comment? Come on down, sir. This is Mayor Commission. Uh, good evening. I'm Charlie Jackson. I uh, just want to, I was here about three, two, a couple months ago, and I'm back. I just want to, uh, again, commend you all for the work that you're doing, just doing a great, I think, dynamic work. Uh, like I said, I, I'm a resident of Newberry, and I moved here because of uh, being smart with your decisions, smart growth. I've been here about 20 plus years, and I can tell you that uh, having traveled the world, here in the city of Newberry, in the skirts of Newberry, is just an outstanding place to live. So again, I want to commend you and the commissioners and staff, the manager and uh, the attorney, the clerk for everybody doing and the staff who's doing a great work. And then secondly, I want to uh, say that uh, if there's anything that I can do to assist uh, being a combat veteran, uh, uh, promoting the veterans, uh, Commissioner Clark. I'd be definitely willing to get on that bandwagon and join that committee or whatever's out there. And I uh, also plan to come back, perhaps, and, and uh, through the military affiliate organizations, perhaps uh, talk about uh, the Gold Star families. And I don't know if we have a Gold Star charter here or not, but it's certainly something that we want to look upon as uh, we have such a great group of veterans in, in our community. And uh, I think it's, it's good to have elected officials who understand uh, the great sacrifice that veterans have, pl uh, have played in terms of keeping our nation free. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we appreciate it. You're welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> Love those. Other public comment. Come on down, man. Hey, Commission. Hey, uh, Jordan. Hey, hey. Thanks for um, I Can you up my say comments. your name for the... Uh, I'm Brandy yeah. Oldman. Thank you. Um, Y'all seen me before. Uh, I just wanted to not ask because I know it's not a QA, and a but uh, I urge y'all to consider in a couple of years, a lot of y'all might not be on the commission. So with, if this charter goes through, there, it sounds like they're relying on the city a lot for it. And um, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to look if they don't have the city behind them. The new commission could come in and say, we don't want this. And then whatever happens, happens. And I wanted to congratulate you on your 20 years of service, too. <laughs> that was all. I appreciate that comment. I can't imagine anybody getting elected that doesn't want to support the kids. So, other public comment. Seeing none, we are adjourned. That's it.